Hello there YouTube. Well, um, this is going to be a relatively short Thoughts of no one in particular. It's also going to be one without any gimmicks because I think that would cheapen the message. The message of course being about homophobia. Last night I saw a documentary on Channel 4. I will link the All On Demand uh, link below. I'm not sure that everybody can see it because of um, country blocking, but it is compulsive viewing. In fact, if you gave me any authority in the world, everybody would have to watch this bloody thing. Um, because it is just so sickening what happened to this poor bloke. Alan Turing, um, not many of you know this um, chap, but uh, because of the fact that most of his work was either sort of highly academic or top secret for a long time, and he's kind of been forgotten about history, but um, his contributions to science are incredible. His paper um, on computing machines, I think it's called, in the 20s, 30s. He wrote this paper and this laid the foundation for the digital age. Everything that you've got that is digital in any way that uses O's and ones in its coding is a direct result of Alan Turing's work. Might as well call them Turing machines because that's what they are. But that is a contribution doesn't end there because then you go on to the war where he was developing what was the first computer ever built, a bomb, it's built with an E to uh, differentiate it from the atom bomb, um, but um, it was it was this um, computing engine that was designed to break the Enigma code and yeah he was a key player on Station X in Bletchley Park. He was known as the prof because of the fact that everybody went to him for correcting their maths and uh, sorting things out. And finally, his final contribution to science in the 50, early 50s, just before he died, um, was to get the idea of bringing maths into biology. Might sound a bit strange, but this is the foundation of a lot of sort of genetic testing, um, genetic um, research, because of the fact that he saw these patterns, um, these patterns in nature, mathematical patterns, and he wanted to crack this code. Unfortunately, he died before it is, and I will go on to explain this. Turing was gay, um, and before 1964 in England, it was illegal. And um, it, 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 he kind of um, got away with his what his colleagues called his eccentricities um, during the war because of the fact that people were so busy fighting Hitler. And Bletchley Park was a very, um, Station X was a very sort of uh, diverse and um, welcoming place because providing you had the brains to beat the crap out of Hitler um, you were accepted no matter what you were. Um, they had a woman um, who was at the top level of Station X which was completely unheard of outside of the SOE and um, some of the other intelligence agencies because women just weren't getting to these kind of positions. And um, it really uh, came to a, he um, rather naively um, reported a uh, lover who stole from him and of course being a complete, um, he wasn't exactly uh, fully clued up on the ways of the world, he admitted to um, what was termed at the time as gross indecency to the police in the hope of getting his father's watch bank. Um, he was given a choice of prison or a chemical therapy, which today is called chemical castration. 
they basically flooded his body with female hormones until his testosterone levels just dropped to zero. Now, this not only has profound physical effects, which are extremely would have been extremely embarrassing for any uh, Englishman at the time, but it has um, profound effects on the brain chemistry. These, this, the homophobic law of the time destroyed this man's mind. This man who had already contributed so much to science, to the advancements of um, human progress, his mind had been raped by this drug. And because of this, 18 months after he started this therapy, well, he'd just come off the therapy, he committed suicide. He is one of, there must be millions of victims of suicide due to homophobic pressure. And that's what really gets me angry. The fact that, particularly here on YouTube and on social networking and forums, there are people who are posting the kind of homophobic crap that led to a society like the one that persecuted Turing, drove him to his death, and they are using the devices created by the work of Alan Turing to essentially bring back the world that killed him. And that sickens me. I mean, I will admit, I am a Christian. I um, do go to church. And I go to a church that is very conservative, but if there is one thing I disagree with, with the conservative stance, it is their treatment of homosexuals. Particularly as the um, biblical interpretation that they're using is flawed. I mean, they can go on about biblical literalism and all that crap, but... Seriously, it is massively flawed. Um, several points Jesus um, turns around and says, look, old purity laws don't apply anymore. What goes in a man's mouth does not make him unclean, but what what's in his spirit makes him unclean, and all that stuff. It's, it's just so incredibly flawed, and it is, it is the direct result of... Um, the American uh, fundamentalist infection that is that is spreading throughout the church and sort of preying on sort of people who had sort of mildish conservative views before, and now they're being infected by this brand of America wingnutism, and it's tearing the church apart, tearing it down, getting rid of our credibility with anybody outside the church because. Nowadays, when you see a Christian on telly, um, look at Torture and Miracle Day, for example, they're the bigoted type. They're not the sort of person that you want to look up to. Um, and that's just totally wrong. I'm sorry, but you're not going to sort of... Well, we're never going to restore the church to the level it was... Uh, when it was a kind of a cultural necessity to be Christian. And that's a good thing, because really we don't want people just playing the role. We want people who who have, quote my friend John Covey, have Christ in their hearts. And frankly, some of these homophobes don't. They, they may, like... Ben and Fang X um, did recently dress it up in nice, nice enough language, but it's still God hates fags, and that's that's just disgusting. Um, among the many people who have contributed to the church in its history, are several homosexuals. Venerable Beads and Cuthbert name loads and loads of saints, of um, holy people, 
a wife of the Archbishop of Canterbury in the 18th century. Um, Mary Benson. There's a biography out at the moment of her um, who, and it's, it's, it's um, titled with a quote from Disraeli, which is, as good as God, as clever as a devil. And I think to have that as an epitaph in what was a society that was extremely well, it wasn't it wasn't as bad as in some ways as society today because of the fact that Mary Benson was accepted, despite the fact that she was having an affair with a daughter of a previous archbishop. Um, she was accepted because of who she was, not because of her sins or whatever you want to call them, because her husband's dead, so really it's a grey area, but you know, it just really pisses me off, and I'd just like to leave it there because it's getting me really angry.